everyone, my name is Olivia and welcome to my Loki themed reading vlog. Ever since the show Loki came out on Disney Plus, I have been aching to read a story inspired by him. And once that show came out, my entire TikTok feed was Loki themed. Every single video I saw was centered around Loki and I saw a particular video from a booktok creator recommending Loki themed novels where he is either the main character or the love interest. So naturally, I added those to my CBR and then I found out that two of them were on sale for 99 cents so I decided to snatch those up really quick and make a reading vlog centered around those two novels. So the first book that I am picking up for this reading vlog is The Goddess of Nothing at All. This is the longer book of the two that I have picked out for this video so I'm only about 6% through this on my Kindle which I'm reading both the books on. This follows our main character Sigyn who is the only daughter of Odin and she is struggling to find a title as a goddess because Odin doesn't want to put that upon her. So she decides to take matters into her own hands and meet Loki and that is exactly where I'm up to in the novel so far. But the synopsis says it is a dark fantasy Norse myth retelling for fans of Cersei, the witch's heart, and the silence of the girls. Those are some of my favorite novels besides The Witch's Heart, which I have not read yet, but I do plan on reading it soon. So, so far I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying the banter that we have between Sigyn and Loki. Loki has like the same characteristics as Loki from the MCU, minus the fact that he has red hair in this book. And the moment the author said that he had red hair, my brain was like, no, that's incorrect. He has black hair. So I'm picturing him as Loki from the MCU, but I'm really enjoying it so far. I do not know anything about Sigyn's story in terms of Norse mythology. I know a lot more about Loki than I do about Sigyn. So the story is going to be a complete surprise for me, but I'm really enjoying the banter so far. I'm glad that we already met Loki 6% into this novel. And I think it's around 400 pages on Kindle. I don't know what that would translate to to a paperback, but I hope I can read a lot today because I don't have any other plans and I just want to sit on my front porch which is newly renovated. We have a nice green wall now instead of that yellow that we used to have and I picked out this green color and I'm really happy with it because I wanted to create kind of like a greenhouse effect with our front porch because we have so many plants everywhere and I think this green complements all the plants that we have around very well while also being like light and airy. So I'm going to sit back and read more of The Goddess of Nothing at All and see where this goes because now that Sigyn has met Loki, I'm sure things are going to stir up. I'm sure Odin is going to be very angry that she's meeting up with the exiled god. I'm just... I'm so excited to read this Loki fiction. And I'm also excited to kind of like compare and contrast both books that I have planned for this vlog, but I will not tell you the next title of the other Loki novel that I plan on reading. You're just gonna have to wait and see, and then I will compare and contrast which one I like the most. But I am very excited because I've been wanting to read novels inspired by Loki for the longest time, and I'm so glad that person made that TikTok recommending all these books because they sound fantastic. Leaning back, Loki draped his legs over the arm of the chair, looking every bit as comfortable and casual as a cat. I'm sure you already know why I'm back. Do I already love him? Yes. So I am 30% through The Goddess of Nothing at All, which means I'm about 200 pages out of the 600 that the entire book is. Did not realize this book was this long, but I am greatly enjoying this book. This book is amazing. It's everything I've ever wanted out of a Loki fiction. His personality is very sarcastic and witty and he just feels so much like Loki and his relationship with Sigyn is developing. The plot is very intense. There's a lot of things happening and I feel like the action is slowly bubbling and things are going to start climaxing because we are only 30% through and the characters are a little bit too happy right now and I'm just like what is going to happen in the next 70% of this book because it seems like it's going to be intense. It's already very intense. I have not read a fantasy book in a while and I forgot like how violent fantasy books can get and 
Something happened to Loki that I was just absolutely surprised by. I was just like horrified by it. It was just very intense to read about because I have not read a fantasy book in so long, but I'm just scared to see where it's going to go next because I don't really know about Loki's relationship with Sigyn in the mythology. So I don't know like what are the next stages in their relationship? What's going to happen? I don't know if they're going to end up together. I truly do not know because with fantasy books, anything can happen. They cannot end up together and I'm just very worried. But I just wanted to let you know that I'm greatly enjoying this book and only like a hundred people have rated it on Goodreads because I think it's self-published. And I'm like really glad that I found this off of TikTok because I would have never found it otherwise. And I'm excited to see where it's going to go next and maybe have a couple of you pick it up because if you're also interested in Loki, I would highly recommend this book so far because it's so good. I'm excited to dive deeper into it because I don't have any plans for today as well. So I have another Loki themed outfit on and I'm going to sit on my front porch and read more of this book. I cannot stop raving about this book to my friends. I just keep on messaging them saying this book is so good even though none of them are interested in Loki. I'm just like this book i'm really enjoying it i forgot to say that our main character sigan is canonically queer in this story she has had previous relationships with women and it is discussed here and there throughout the story but i'm keen to see if they're going to mention that loki is queer because i know he is canonically queer in the marvel comics but i don't know if he is in norse mythology I have two very I have two varying pieces of information being thrust my way, which is Norse mythology and what I know from Marvel. So I don't know if it's going to be mentioned in this story, but I will let you know if it is. Okie dokie, a package came in the mail and I know exactly what it is, but I wanted to unbox it for you all. So let's do that now. I got this book during the Barnes and Noble's 50% off sale. I didn't go into the store because I really did not want to because my Barnes and Noble's is always really crowded because it's smaller than usual Barnes and Noble's. So I ordered this online and it was still 50% off. So it is a book I already read that I loved that I wanted a copy to add to my nonfiction collection and it is Emily Rajakowski's My Body. I absolutely love this nonfiction. I have been a very big fan of Emily. I've been following her for years upon years and I have really admired her resilience and the strength that she has to call out people who have objectified and just commodified her body against her permission. So this nonfiction kind of delves deep into that, her experience becoming a model, her experience in Hollywood, the darker side of Hollywood, and I just found it to be a very riveting nonfiction and I really enjoyed her writing style. It was very addictive in a way, like I read this entire thing in I think one or two sittings and I just really enjoyed her writing and what she had to say and her experiences. So I wanted to add this to my collection to eventually reread and highlight and I'm really happy that I got it in my hands for 50% off and it's also a signed copy which is amazing. So let's look at a signed edition. Look at that! Love it. This book is essentially Loki being like, I'm a trickster god and I'm like, okay, I get that. I know that. And then he does something mischievous and I'm like, I'm stressed out. I'm 36% through and Loki finally said that she is gender fluid and now I am picturing Loki as Holland Roden because in the book Loki has red hair and Holland Roden is one of my favorite actresses. She is from Teen Wolf and she just acted her ass off in that show. She was such a good actress and whenever there's a redhead in a book I always picture her because her hair was just always so beautiful. She always had like this red lip on that matched her hair color and it was just she was just such a beautiful person and she hasn't been in a lot of movies recently but I am picturing her as Loki and things are going down. There's a lot of mischievousness in this book and I'm really enjoying it because it's very Loki and I'm just loving how accepting Sigyn is of Loki and her identity and it's just... this is a great time overall. This is just... This is amazing. I did it. I finished The Goddess of Nothing at All, my first read of 2021, and it is also now one of my new favorite reads of all time. This fantasy is just a sweeping tale following decades and decades of Sigyn and Loki's life, and it's very true to Norse mythology, which I knew quite literally nothing about because I was surprised at every twist and turn that happened in this book, and I was texting my friend Manda, who is also reading this book at the same time, and 
and I'm a bit ahead of her so I'm telling them about the book and I'm describing different things that are happening and Manda's like do you know nothing about Norse mythology because this is all very common in these stories about Loki and I knew nothing at all so it was really cool to dive into this story without knowing the true story of Loki besides knowing Loki from the MCU and now I have learned that Loki in the MCU is nothing like Loki from mythology and I didn't realize how brutal Norse mythology could be in general. One thing that I learned from this book is how much I can despise Loki. Like I love Loki from the MCU but Loki in this book is incredibly infuriating. My mailman is right here on my front porch. One thing that I learned from this book is how infuriating Loki's character can be. Yes, Loki can be incredibly enamoring and sarcastic and funny, but Loki's decisions in this book is absolutely infuriating. Every single thing that Loki does just made me so mad and this book is so brutal. I didn't realize that when the summary said it's a dark fantasy, it really meant that it's a dark fantasy. I didn't keep that word in mind when going into this book and I was just like, why is this book so sad? Why is this book so heart-wrenching? It's so gruesome. I was nauseous at one point because the description of the scene that happened was just so harrowing and so sad and so upsetting and it made me realize that yes this is a dark fantasy and the author clearly stated that this is not a happily ever after type of story. This story is real, it's very true to the Norse mythology of Loki's life along with Sigyn. I learned about their origin stories and how their lives are tied to destiny and it was just such a cool story. There was one thing that I didn't really enjoy about it was the fact that at the beginning there were a lot of like side quests. It felt like a video game in the way that Loki and Sigyn were always having to fix a problem and having to travel far away to talk to these people to fix an issue and it felt very video gamey at first and I was like but where's the overall plot like what are they reaching towards and then once you get into the meat of the story maybe like 40 or 50 percent through that's when like the overall plot really hits and you are just sucked right into it you are on the edge of your seat and I was also telling my friend Manda that like we were reading for hours upon hours of this story and it felt like we weren't making a dent into it because there's just so much happening there are so many different situations that Sigyn and Loki get into and it was just amazing. I am usually not impressed by fantasy at all. I find it very hard to get into but I was completely immersed by this story and I also really enjoyed the fact that it took place over decades of Sigyn and Loki's life. It wasn't just a year of their life, it was like their whole entire lifetime. So we really got to see these characters grow. We got to see Sigyn develop so well. We got to see how consistently annoying Loki is and how his personality is his greatest fault and it brings other people down as well and I just thought it was so good. It taught me so much about Norse mythology. It showed me the real side of who Loki is. It taught me about Sigyn and it was also just incredibly upsetting but also very eye-opening to like the darker parts of Norse mythology that I did not previously know about. But if you were deciding to pick up this book I would highly recommend looking at the trigger warnings because it is a dark fantasy. It is upsetting. It is just just full of sadness and full of despair. So I would definitely keep that in mind before picking it up because I did not realize that it was going to be that dark, but it really was that dark of a fantasy. So I would definitely keep that in mind if you're thinking of picking it up. But I feel like I've discovered like a gem in like the book community. I feel like I've discovered this book that not a lot of people have read and I just want more people to read and I greatly enjoyed it. So I think if you are a fan of Loki from the MCU, if you want to learn more about Norse mythology, if you want to read a very dark fantasy, then I would highly recommend picking this up. But now let's move on to the next Loki book and it is called Truth and Other Lies by Lyra Wolf. This was also recommended to me on that TikTok where it recommended a ton of books inspired by Loki this one is greatly shorter than The Goddess of Nothing at All. That was 600 pages. This is 332, so it's like half of it. I'm already 20 pages in, and it is actually from the point of view of Loki. The Goddess of Nothing at All is obviously following Sigyn, so I'm excited to see his point of view. I'm excited to see his justification of his rash actions. I'm just excited to see another side of this story because this one also seems to be very true to Norse mythology, and it's not really a full retelling. It's definitely following the timeline of Loki's 
life in Norse mythology. So I'm excited to see how we follow Loki's point of view. Hello everyone, I wanted to give you an update and tell you that I am 113 pages into Truth and Other Lies. I'm not enjoying it as much as I enjoyed The Goddess of Nothing at all. That one was just action-packed. It was so dark, it was so intriguing. And this one is from the point of view of Loki, and I'm not enjoying his perspective as much as I enjoyed Sigyn. Because Sigyn is somewhat of an outsider, she is looking at how horrifying these gods are. And I feel like from Loki's point of view, we get a very arrogant type of mindset which is really fun and I really enjoy it because it feels very Loki like but it's just a story structure that's not as good as the goddess of nothing at all. In truth and other lies Loki is meeting Sigyn in Midgard and he previously had a relationship with a very famous figure that was so cruel in the goddess of nothing at all that I'm just like baffled that he would be in a relationship with them in this story. But this is the author's retelling, this is the author's own interpretation of what Loki would be like. So I'm trying to roll with that enjoy it, and enjoy the story, but it's very much slower to get into, even though it is half the number of pages as the goddess of nothing at all. But I did want to show you something that I got during our trip to New York where we went bookstore hopping because that was just such a fun day. It was so nice to see these independent bookstores and to wander the shelves and see the different layouts that they had and one book that I found was on my wish list for months upon months because my library doesn't have a copy of it so I have to buy a copy for myself in order to read it and it is this book. Let me go get it. Rules for Visiting. I'll be honest, I don't know where I heard of this book but I added it to my book wish list because it seems right up my alley and whoever recommended this to me maybe it was someone on YouTube maybe it was someone on TikTok I don't really remember but this sounds so it sounds like something I really need in life so it says dry witty and unapologetic May Attaway loves literature and her work as a botanist for the university in her hometown but then May begins to suspect that she's not as good as friendships as she once thought she was so when she gets leave from her job she decides to go on a journey to spend time with four long neglected friends it says with simplicity and honesty Jessica Francis Kane has crafted an exquisite story about a woman trying to find a new way to be in the world. This nourishing book with its beautiful contemplation of travel, trees, family, and friendship is the perfect antidote to our chaotic times. This book sounds like it was made for me. The cover reminds me of me. It just seems like the book that I need in my life and I found it in a used bookstore called Half Moon Books in Kingston, New York, which was a beautiful town that I definitely want to go back to to wander around because we went there kind of around sunset so we didn't get to see a lot because it was really cold. So we only went to Half Moon Books and then we went to a book bar called Rough Draft Books, I think, or just Rough Draft. 
and it was amazing but I did not get a book from there I did get this from Half Moon Books and in the book is a really funny note and it says happy Brit day because a child tried to write happy birthday and I'm going to keep this note in this book forever because it came along with the book and it makes me happy and I'm just really glad that I stumbled upon this book while in the used bookstore because I really wanted to get myself a copy and it's been on my book wish list for a while so I think it's going to be a book that I will really enjoy and really love and I hope it'll become a new favorite of mine because it just sounds like so up my alley it sounds so close to how I feel about my life currently and I think I'm going to really enjoy it so this is a mini book haul for you I went to so many bookstores I think I went to five but I only got one book that shows serious restraint We did it. I finished both Loki books and I'm here to compare and contrast. I wrote down all my notes. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about Truth and Other Lies. Truth and Other Lies turned out to be a three-star read for me because it just didn't have the intrigue that The Goddess of Nothing at All had. The Goddess of Nothing at All really set the bar for me in terms of Loki books apparently because once I started Truth and Other Lies, I just was not as invested in the story as I was with the first book. Truth and Other Lies does follow Loki's point of view, which I really did like. I liked hearing his internal monologue and how snarky and arrogant he was. I thought that was so true to Loki and I really enjoyed that aspect of the story but other than that the intrigue came in waves with this plot. At the beginning the story was rushed between Loki's relationship with Sigyn then it really slowed down in the middle almost put me in a book slump kind of rushed towards the end but it was also dry at the same time towards the end where the author seemed like they were just really throwing in a lot of things together in order to wrap up the story. So while I really did enjoy Loki's internal monologue and I thought that his personality was very Loki-esque, that couldn't save the story for me in terms of enjoyment because it was just very dry, it was very insta-lovey, his relationship with Sigyn wasn't believable because they didn't have a lot of moments together for me to believe that they were in love with each other like I did with the goddess of nothing at all. The goddess and nothing at all was very true to Loki's mythology and his relationship with Sigyn where it was not only all-consuming but incredibly toxic as well. We followed Loki and Sigyn over a long course of time in that novel and that made me attached to these characters. I was attached to Loki despite the fact that he greatly annoyed me and made me so frustrated but that is exactly how Loki would be as the god of lies because he's always lying to others, he's always manipulating others and doing things out of the goodness for himself but not for others and I really enjoyed that aspect in The Goddess of Nothing at all. While it was incredibly long, it was two times longer than Truth and Other Lies, I feel like it needed that much substance to make us attached to these characters, to make me root for them, and to have these very high stakes where a lot of gruesome things happened, there was a lot of action and intrigue, it just it was so full of life. It was just such a well-written story that I want more people to read. It was my first read of 2021 that I greatly enjoyed. I did not think going into this book that it would become a new favorite book of mine, but I cannot recommend it enough. I would highly recommend looking up the trigger warnings before starting The Goddess of Nothing at all, because when the author says it is a dark fantasy, she really does mean it is a dark fantasy. It is gruesome. There are a lot of upsetting moments in this in that story and it was just a very dark story in general. But I do have to say I enjoyed The Goddess of Nothing at all so much and I'm so happy I found a five-star read in this reading vlog. I did not expect that going into this reading vlog but it was such a pleasant surprise and I'm so happy that I'm able to have this book now that I can recommend to all of you and I really do hope you enjoyed this reading vlog. I really liked this 
experiment of comparing and contrasting two very similar stories and seeing which one I liked most. So let me know if you want me to do this again in the future. If you want to follow me anywhere else on social media, all my links will be down below along with my Goodreads if you want to see my reviews for the Loki books over there. I'll be sure to link both reviews down below. But thank you so much for watching. I had such a great time filming this reading vlog and I hope to film a lot more reading vlogs in the future because I get to be very artistic with my filming and I get to chat with you here and there in between all the beautiful footage that you see. So thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!